Football is the fastest game of foot. I love the running gun. Keep your eyes on the ball. Yeah, I hope to lead this 1997 uh, Syracuse lacrosse team back to Memorial Day. We don't have a lot of heroes in this game. The dynasty keeps on going. Super Sports presents NCAA Lacrosse. Today from the Carrier Dome, the third-ranked Syracuse Orangemen host number two Johns Hopkins. Both teams come into today's ball game with two and one records, and this one ought to be a beauty. You know, every sport has its rivalries. In basketball, it's Celtics versus Lakers. Baseball, the Giants versus the Dodgers. In golf, Nicholas versus Palmer. When it comes to major college lacrosse, though, this is it. Syracuse against Johns Hopkins. Welcome to the game, everyone. I'm Steve Heider alongside Dale Drypolter and Dale. Although this is a great rivalry, the Orangemen certainly have a score to settle here today. Well, the last three outings are zero for three, but these are two teams that measure success generally by whether they won the national championship or not. So these are two quality lacrosse teams meeting early. Should be an exciting game, Steve. Head coach Tony Seaman has won three straight against Syracuse, but he's not taking anything for granted. He knows the Dome, the fans, and the Orangemen can make for a deadly combination. It's always been pretty upbeat, and that's the way it is in the dome. And you get caught up in that, and uh, you know, I just we just like to establish some tempo and use our heads. And, and it's a very tough team Syracuse is offensively to go up and down with and, and put those kind of demands on your defense. Meanwhile, Syracuse gets set for this ball game with the Jays, and longtime assistant coach John Desco talks to us. He says that the Jays will test the Orangemen's mental toughness as well. We're going to have to be patient against them. We're going to have to understand their strengths. Um, they do some different things defensively as far as how they switch and double-team the ball. Um, we've got to be prepared for that and, uh, and take advantage of it in some cases. Always a lot of offense when these teams get on the floor. And today, Dudley Dixon has found the net 12 times already for the Jays. He's a man Syracuse must be concerned with. He doesn't get many assists. He's only got one so far. But you're right, he has 12 goals. He's one of their leading attackmen, the guy, probably the go-to guy on the attack. So let's watch for Dudley Dixon, number 33, having a great season. Of course, Syracuse can counter. they got a lot of weapons, but number 15, Rob Cavett having a great season. Four goals and four assists last week. He's 11-6 and six on the year, 17 points, 11 goals and six assists. So he's as good as anybody Syracuse has got. So both teams feature a very strong attack, and that's going to be a real key. The goalies uh, wish perhaps they weren't as strong because they're going to have their hands full today. Rob Cavett and his Orangemen and Dudley Dixon and his fellow Blue Jays are getting set for the opening faceoff. We'll be back. We're glad to have you with us. SU Lacrosse coming your way after this timeout on Super Sports. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Brine, the power behind the game. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome. Number three, Syracuse, ready to entertain number two, Johns Hopkins, and the head coaches for today's ball game. For the Blue Jays, in his fifth season out of Cortland State, 59 and 26, actually his seventh season, Tony Seaman. And for Syracuse, Roy Simmons Jr. in his 27th year. The only game he has missed in his 27 years as head coach was against Johns Hopkins here in 1995 at the Carrier Dome. Of course, he is here, and we are getting set for a game. The series, 18 to 10, Hopkins leads with one tie. The Jays have won the last three. The last time the Orangemen won way back in 1993, and we are underway. Syracuse and Johns Hopkins trying to control the opening faceoff. And no one really had control of it. We have a whistle. It's uh, going to go against Syracuse. Burns is out there. They called illegal procedure, and they start this game right up. So here come the Jays, number 40, Werner Kruger, bringing the ball up. He is being defended by Syracuse, number 26, Devin Ackerman. Jays get the ball around behind in the perimeter. Dan Denahan, number one. He's watched by long stick, number 41, Sam Vollen. Working around, number 33 now with the ball. Dudley Dixon, he's got 12 goals already this season. He is a threat at all times. Warning. And Danahan loses the ball. Uh, he warded. He pushed off. It was obvious. And you can tell right now with some of their strategy, they're going to put pressure on the ball in Syracuse on the clear. They get the ball back in to Gebhard. Syracuse had a couple of problems clearing the ball. And don't forget, you got to get that out of there in 10 seconds. So Syracuse does get it upfield. Well, here come the orange Number 13, Andy Sharich brings it upfield. Down to Kavovic. 
behind the net. Casey Powell, what a season he's having. 13 goals, 13 assists already. Matt Coyone up top to Ira Vanderpool. Vanderpool being checked by number 24, Rob Dorr. Back up to Coyone. Coyone making the move to the net. Stops to midfield, the centering pass. Carcaterra across to Jackson. This is a good defense for Hopkins, and they're making Syracuse take the time. Jackson trying to make something happen near the net. Gets it back out to Vanderpool, across to Carcaterra. Carcaterra toward the net. They're giving a little bit of a zone look there defensively, and then, oh yes! And there it is, Ira Vanderpool scores the first goal of the game at 13-17. The Orangemen take a one to nothing lead. For Ira Vanderpool, his sixth goal of the season. It was a nice look. Urfi was defending Vanderpool, but Vanderpool just looked away and then made a break to the goal, got a perfect pass, and that's goal number one for Syracuse, goal number one in the game. And Vanderpool got it and seen action early. Usually a guy who doesn't come in right away, starting on the midfield, uh, came in from the wing on the uh, on the faceoff, but he's out now and they got another midfield unit in. Well, this is one of the things that Coach Simmons and Coach Desco said they wanted to do, get off to a quick start and uh, not allow Hopkins to uh, play that slow down type of ball, make them play catch up. Hopkins having some trouble getting the control of the face off. Andrew Godfrey flips it upfield. That's number three, Brian Kuzma. Here comes Hopkins, number 30, fires a shot saved by Gephardt. Bailey's shot. And Syracuse comes up with it. Jackson. Is that Jackson? No. 18 is Chris McCartan. McCartan, the defenseman. Thought it was 11. It wasn't. Uh, got the ball up. Came out of that pack. Gets it to the attack. Now out to the midfield. Kavovic gets it out to the center. That was Jackson. Yep. Shot no good. And here comes Hopkins. Andrew Godfrey, number nine. Upfield to number 42, Dave Marks. That's Dudley Dixon. Gets it way outside. A.T. Bailey. Now they're just setting up a play. We talked about it at the open, and the people say they're going to take the air out of the ball. Not necessarily, but they are going to run a play, and, and they practice them, and, and if it doesn't work, they'll take it back out. They're very patient, but it does slow the game down, Steve. What is the key for Syracuse other than to play good defense, just to maintain their poise? Absolutely. Saved by Gebhardt of beauty. And then you have to be able to take your opportunities when you get them, because we're going to see what the, yeah, in the crease. So Syracuse is going to get a clear, but they're going to be on top of Syracuse right away. That's McCartan, 18, with the ball. Here's the shot. You look 26. Uh, oh, Kelly just uh, puts it down low, and a great save. Nice save by Jason Gebhardt. He has, coming into this game, 46 saves. He's given up 42 goals. The Orangemen on the move. Centering pass goes astray. It's going to go out of bounds. Hopkins will take over. Rule brought it down that time, the defenseman. So Syracuse using defensemen to bring it off. They ran it all the way down. I asked Coach Simmons if he was concerned about the number of goals that Gebhardt had given up this year. He said, considering the amount of shots that he has been barraged by, he said he's, uh, he's been a hero in the Nets. Absolutely. Oh, that's the hustle. Oh, oh nice job by Carcaterra. Ryan Carcaterra, number two, the younger brother of Syracuse's midi, Paul Carcaterra. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Jay's working it around very deliberately around the perimeter. Number 28 has the ball now. That's Billy Evans, senior out of Baltimore. Early 2-1 in the turnover category. Jay's keeping the ball, working around the perimeter. Number 28 making his move to the net number 28, Billy Evans. That's a Fire. pass. Shot. Oh, no, they're going to call it a shot. I thought he was trying to pass it. If it was a pass, Syracuse would get the ball. In lacrosse, on a shot, whoever's closest to it, when it goes out of bounds, you get the ball back. So in that particular situation, it was Hopkins. A subjective uh, official's call? Well, you know, I, it didn't look like he was uh, taking a real shot, but yeah, that's their call, and they got a feel for the game. Good defense by Syracuse, ball on the carpet. Dudley Dixon little, has little way outside. Bounce shot in. Score, Dudley Dixon. He ties his ball game at 10.35 in the first period. Hopkins and Syracuse at one apiece. 
Got it past Jason Gebhardt. A little bit of defensive confusion in number 30, Syracuse Alexander. Watch, he was back and he said, who's picking up number 33, Dixon? And then he said, I better go out. So by the time he got out there, Dixon had time to set up his shot. And you see the result right there as he whistled it past Gebhardt. So Dudley Dixon strikes first for the Blue Jays. It's 1-1. We're tied, 10.35 to go in the first period. The third-ranked Orangeman hosting number two, Johns Hopkins, and Syracuse again has some trouble controlling the faceoff, but losing his stick, number nine, Andrew Godfrey, the Orangeman catch a break. It's Rob Cavavit. Cavavit being dogged by the defense, number 43, John Gagliardi doing a great job. And the Jays get it back. Gagliardi does a great job. And you know, if you want to see what that's like, but pick up a six-foot stick and see how uh, how hard it is to manipulate and maneuver. And that's exactly what Gagliardi did. Stripped him, and now they've uh, Carcatero's got the ball for the Blue Jays. Poor pass. Stolen by Doug Jackson. Jackson, four goals against Yale. Pass to Casey Powell. Powell gets it into Cavett. Oh, shot scored by Rob Cavett. And a penalty. What a play by Rob Cavett. Wow. This was a great job of, of heads up lacrosse because Cavavit uh, finishes it off, but watch what happens. Poor pass by Carcantera. Jackson takes it, goes left, goes right, feeds in to Powell. Watch what happens. Takes him right around the neck. He scored going backwards, Steve. Cavavit scored while he was going down. Cavavit, the senior out of Yorktown Heights. Preseason All-American, 12th in career points at Syracuse University. And he picks up his 12th goal of the season and puts the Orange up 2-1. to one. Important faceoff because Syracuse will be up a man. But if you don't get the ball, they get to run some time off. So Syracuse would like to get this faceoff as they are up one man, one minute. Well, freshman Tim Burns entrusted with uh, securing the faceoff. And he lost it. Whistle and Jays get it back. Now, the idea here is got to double team the ball. Make him put it on the carpet. Don't let him take any time off the clock. Werner Kruger bringing it in, and he's got a wide open shot at Gebhardt. Behind the back, flip. Goes astray. Syracuse ball. They made him put it on the carpet, and Hopkins has done that a couple times. The ball has been put on the carpet. Now they're still up. They've got 44 seconds left in the man up. So a lot of time, you got to be patient. Casey Powell, his ball club leading 2-1. to one. We've got 9.34 to go in the first period. And the Orangemen, a man up for the season, 6 for 19 that's 32 percent. You'd like to hit around 40, I mean, you'd like to hit 100, but you, you get up around 40 percent, you're doing a pretty good job. Ball, ball taken right away. Great interception. That's, number 24 got that ball. Door. Okay, Dudley Dixon. And once again, it was a shot. Now, Syracuse has nine seconds left on the man up. I don't know if they're going to be able to get a shot off. Long clearing attempt. Oh! Yet it's, if he didn't, boy, that net was wide open. Here comes Syracuse. He's off sides. And if, if, if not a slash, he's off sides. So now he's going to go over. He said, if I'm over, I'm going to be over for good. Doug Jackson now. Across the field. Casey Powell looking to make some magic. Works his way around the defense. Loses the ball. Syracuse will get the ball for 30 seconds. Man up, Syracuse. So offsides for the Blue Jays gives Syracuse another man up opportunity. Now the last time I think they had some sloppy passing and I don't think that they did exactly what Coach Simmons would like to do when they were man up. They didn't get off maybe one shot. Tony Seaman looking uh, little upset. Another Cortland State guy. Yeah, who said uh, if you're going to be a coach, Syracuse and Cortland seem to be good places. Obviously Hopkins also, but they turn out a lot of coaches because there's a lot of teachers from those schools. Ju Junior Andrew Godfrey serving the penalty. Syracuse 0 for 1 in its man-up situations here today. They're getting another crack at it. Kataya. Good defense. Pass way outside for Syracuse. Shot no good by Carcaterra. Casey Powell comes up with a loose ball. Good job by Doerr, the defenseman, to stop that. They're even now. This is not man up anymore. Ryan Powell gets it to Kataya behind the net. Half of it has it. Casey Powell. Pass. Shot. Good luck. High. By number 11, Doug Jackson. 20-second timeout. Oh, no, somebody's hurt. It was an official time. 
Way down behind the net, can't make out the number. 22, it's Paul. Powell. It is Paul. And that is something that uh, Syracuse can ill afford any sort of an injury to their top player. In past years, there have been any number of guys who could fill in and, and offensive threats, and Casey Powell is the man this year. Well, it, unfortunately, we're going to see if we can see what happened. Maybe it's just a bruise. He just went down right there, and he grabbed his knee. Let's hope that uh, it's an abrasion. Get a good look at, uh, yeah. 13 goals, 13 assists coming into this ball game. Just the fourth of the year for Syracuse. A little bit of concern on the face of the stoic Roy Simmons Jr. Doesn't appear to be a knee at least at this point. Because he's on his knees. I don't think they'd let him do that if, he had, if he'd hurt his knee. That is why you are the analyst, sir. You've been at this for a long time. Syracuse leading Johns Hopkins 2-1. to one. We have 7.53 to go. And trainer Timmy Neal. You see with Dr. Irving Rayfield. And Casey up on his feet. So he's going to take his time and we'll... We'll get a word on what happened. Yeah, Powell, of course, will come out for a while, but he was certainly looking forward to today's matchup. I know Kuzma shut me out last year in their game, the first time I've ever been shut out in the game. And uh, I definitely want to get back at him for that. But uh, um, I think if we put together our offense and uh, control the ball, then you know, we're going to do all right against our defense because uh, we've got a great offense. Casey Powell goes to the Syracuse sidelines. He has one assist as the Orangemen lead 2-1. Action back on. Gagliardi once again did a great job of stripping the ball from Syracuse, number 43, and now Hopkins has it. That's Paul Lasseur, number 29. Brings it upfield into the box. Dan Denahan gets it out to Dudley Dixon. Dixon outside to Billy Evans. Now this is what people would consider, you know, taking the air out of the ball, running the offense, but what they, they're very patient. And if they get a chance to make a move, they'll make the move. It's just a question of being very, very patient and not, to, not jumping for a long time. And if, for any ball club, it's just tough to sustain that defense for that long. Right, but that, that's true. I mean, that's the, you know, it's like go left, go right, go left, go right. And eventually an inch turns into two inches and three inches, and then eventually when you've got them going far enough, what they're doing now is stacking people way out up on top and then just doing a little bit of one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, then if he can break free, then he'll make a, a break for the goal. But then they have cutters on up on top and, and screening the goalie and uh, and making uh, cuts. So it's a, it's a well-designed offense. You can see him cutting and passing if you, a little bit on the right. You'll see right there. See him running? You see all that movement away from the ball? That's called movement away from the ball. Those guys are just cutting and cutting. What they do is hope to increase that little jump, and then they can get a pass and score. So. Well, you get to sleep and then get off that quick shot. Absolutely. Harvey Sackler and Ryan Cummings in the game now, along with number 30, Matt Alexander for Syracuse. That's Kroger. Danahan. They'd like to get uh, their best guy and your guy with a short stick because it's harder to play defense with a short stick. And then you counter by double team and jumping. It's, uh, it's like a chess game. Now out on top. Shot high. Stays Hopkins. Good defense. That set by Ryan Cummings. A transfer from Johns Hopkins to Syracuse. Playing against a lot of his former teammates. He comes up with a loose ball. Gets whacked from behind. McCartan picks it up, though. That's just kind of a help pass. Oh, he got it. Good job by Harvey Sackard. Gets it up to Kavovit. Kavovit on the near side. Bob Kavovit already with one goal here today. Up top to Carcaterra. He'd like to score against his little brother. I know that. Yep. Keeping it all in the family. Coyone and uh, Ira Vanderpool in the midfield. That's Coyone, number 16, with the long hair. Doug Jackson. Outside to Vanderpool. Vanderpool scored Syracuse's first goal of the day. Here comes Coyone. Look at him jump. Pass down to Jackson. Jackson quickly flips it out. Carcaterra way up top now. Looking to make something happen. Nothing there. Good defense by the Jays. Jackson behind the net. Looks it to Rob Kavovic. Kavovic with a spin move. Look in, look in. Oh, too many bodies on him. This will be interesting. 
Back Syracuse ball. No, they give it to Hopkins. It must have been out of bounds. Jackson hustling to the end line, but uh, Carcaterra beat him there. We'll see the end of it. Watch on the shot. Of course, everybody wants to get there. And there, look at Carcaterra. Nice job. Just There's the race just at the end. <laughs> Good work he beat him. Jackson as well to get yes. down there and make it close. Blue Jays trailing 2-1, to one, marching upfield. A little fast break. Oh, open on the crease. Oh, nice save by Gebhardt. Gebhardt <laughs> stops the shot from Dan Collins. Way out on top. They're open. A little unsettled. Syracuse now picks up defensively. Dixon, shot save Good again save. by Gebhardt. Here come the Orangemen. Number seven, Ryan Cummings. Nice job. He just ran that right down the sideline. Didn't force a pass. Now he's going to settle down the little AstroTurf pass to Vanderpool. Cummings will get a breather. Carcaterra back in. Graduate of Nottingham High School, of course. We just mentioned the fact he went to Hopkins and has transferred to Syracuse University. This will be a big game for him. Comes Ryan Powell, the freshman out of Carthage. Younger brother of Casey Powell. Syracuse works it around. Here's Ryan Powell. Look at him, see them jump, they jump and double. Nice, Carcaterra save. Peppers his brother with a shot, but the young brother, they call him Pickles, he made the save. <laughs> Pickles has been busy. That is his, uh, must have been a fan of the Dick Van Dyke show. <laughs> Maury Amsterdam. Maury Amsterdam. Yeah. By the way, we probably had 12 goals scored by this time in the Virginia game. Isn't that something? <laughs> Bad pass. Hopkins throws it away. 3.26 to go in the first quarter. Syracuse still on top, 2-1. To and the Orangemen will set things in motion. This is the pace they talked about. And in talking to John Dusker, you and I got a chance to talk before the game with Kevin Donahue, and they said, well, that's the, the pace is decided uh, by the team that usually the one that wins the face-offs. And uh, it's really been uh, a, a slow pace that Syracuse perhaps would like. But uh, right now they're up by one, so you got to love that if you're a Syracuse fan. 32, that's Tim Glisker, plays linebacker for Paul Pasqualoni as well. Loses control of the ball. Glisker certainly no novelty act. Great high school lacrosse player from Garden City. A fast break. Here comes Hopkins, number six, shot. Another save. Save. Gebhardt's Gebhardt hot. Busy. That he is hot. Aaron Van Horn. Jason Gebhardt, immense. Orangeman breaking. Oh, save. save. by Carcaterra. And the Jays pick up the loose ball. Oh, bad pass and again. And they throw it away. Carcaterra's had two poor passes. It's, it's not hurt him, but this one may hurt him. Turnovers uh, up to six for Hopkins. Ground balls, Syracuse 11th now. Got, uh, Jason Gebhardt has stopped five of the six shots that he has seen early on. We still have 2.43 to go in the first quarter. But Jason Gebhardt having a good game thus far. Casey Powell, good news, back in the ball game, showing no ill effects from his uh, injury of a few moments ago. Fed the crease, wasn't there, ball on the ground. Carcaterra trying to get rid of it. Ball's on the ground. That's got to be failure to advance here pretty soon, isn't it? No, timeout. That was that, you know, they talked about that 20-second timeout. I asked the officials, so what are they going to use this extra timeout for? He says to save a save a does not uh, didn't get the ball up in time, and that's exactly what happened. They did not failure to advance, so they're taking a 20-second timeout. Cabinet did such a good job of hounding Brian Carcaterra, the freshman, the sophomore rather, from Yorktown Heights. Uh, excellent job. Yep. So uh, they take a timeout to save themselves a failure to advance penalty. So Syracuse uh, will use the timeout. To John Desco, of course, has been with head coach Roy Simmons for the last 18 years, and he says getting ready for the Jays requires a great deal of preparation. Hopkins does some things that, uh, that no one else does, and they're a team that you need more preparation for than most teams. Um, this year, with our face-off, we're going to be concerned about that. We're going to try some different things on the face-off against Hopkins. Um, we have to understand the, the type of tempo uh, that will probably happen during the game tomorrow. We have to value our possessions. And as long as we can get that across to the players, I think it'll be a good game. Look up Carcaterra to hit him right in the stick and then up and down. 
and then made the poor pass. He got it back again from a defenseman, and uh, but they did clear the ball. They have it down the right sideline on a fast break. Fast oh, first bad quarter. pass. 2.07 to go, and they track it down. Billy Evans for Johns Hopkins has it. The Jays continue their slowdown. Behind the net is Dan Denahan, number one. He'll get it outside to Billy Evans, number 28. Evans tries to save it, and he does. Denahan picks up the loose ball. That's going to be off of Hopkins, Syracuse ball. Good work on defense by Sam Ballin, number 41, and number 30, Matt Alexander. They both got over there and double teamed Denahan, and he uh, he eventually lost it. Syracuse going to have to clear it now. Let's check the clears out. Nine for 12 for Hopkins. Syracuse, nine of nine, something they had a little problem with, and I think that's one of the reasons why you're seeing Hopkins put a little pressure on the Syracuse clear. Ball at the midfield, and Syracuse 10 for 10. We're under two minutes now, a minute 39 to go. The Orangemen trying to put another score on the board before we break after the first quarter. Syracuse leading 2-1. to one. Casey Powell out there, Kavovit has it. Gets it to Powell. You ought to see what they're doing to Powell. No matter where he is, number four, Penn uh, will go with a guy and just stay with him. Just runs all the time. Powell, oh, pipe pass inside the blister. Shot goes off the post. Big stick. This is Dor. He does a fantastic job. He loses it there, though. How about that job? Oh, that was a good job. One, Ryan Powell. The orange man. Oh, saved again. That Kuzma, number three, got that. Great defense. Now you go right back, and now you got to play defense. 29's Paul Asur. He gets it up to Denahan. Make that Dixon. Dixon now gets it out to Warner Kroger. 41 seconds left on the clock here in the first period. Syracuse leads 2-1. to one. Looks like the Jays, for lack of a better term, will work it for the last shot of the period. Talk to him. Taking their time, getting it around the perimeter. Syracuse hangs it back on defense. That's number 23, A.J. Hogan. It's a great defensive job by Syracuse. Danahan behind the net being watched by number 41, Sam Ballin. 13 seconds left on the clock now. Another save by Hampart. Five seconds left. We'll see if the Orangemen can get off the last shot. Two seconds, one. Shot, save, buster, and uh, that is it for the first quarter. Very exciting, well played, defensive first quarter of lacrosse. Absolutely, and this guy is hot. Uh, he's made some point blankers, just done a great job so far. So the story in the first quarter, Steve Heider, defense. With Syracuse leading 2-1, to one, we'll be right back for second quarter action. You're watching the Syracuse Archman and Johns Hopkins here on Super Sports. We put a responsibility on our own players' sh uh, shoulders that throughout the year I think is pretty tough because every week uh, you're going to play a, a top team and then they're going to be out to beat you and uh, you don't have any patsies. I think where it really hurts is, is, is my second string, not to get them into a lot of games. Play underway, second quarter, Syracuse leading 2-1, 14-47 to go. And Coach Seaman talking about that tough schedule, but uh, that's what makes you strong in the postseason. Shot wide of the net by... Number 28, Billy Evans. Syracuse man down, going to be tested right away because they got caught on a slash. Burns. 12 white, 12 white, one minute slash. So they will be down. So I think this is the first man up opportunity for Hopkins. I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong. Tim Burns <laughs> gets a minute for slashing. So Syracuse said. Uh, does a pretty good job man down. Now watch, I probably they'll just get, uh, they just cursed him, but uh, Hopkins at uh, two of nine, uh, not not real good so far, but we'll see what they do with their first one here. Jay's working around in the man up situation. Dixon up top, inside now. Kevin Kaiser, Kaiser back out. That was a stick save there, nice job defensively. Billy Evans tracks it down. That's Dudley Dixon. Dylan Schlott goes after. Kevin Ackerman out there, number 26, has to knock the ball down twice with a stick. There's Devin. Fine job defensively. 23-21 seconds left on the penalty. Uh-oh. Dixon. 
Oh, 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 what a save. And Gebhardt get a stick on that. He's having some ball game. Casey Powell trying to come up with the ground ball. Gets it. Powell. He's going to get triple teamed. Whips it again. Look, look at the bodies getting off him. Three Blue Jays got up off of Casey Powell. And then Kuzma has to, has to bend his stick back. Watch. There's Kuzma. Yeah, he got him there. He turns. Bang, bang, bang. He got hit six times before he managed to get that shot off. Casey Powell having an amazing season. Well, Kuzma's the guy they said, you know, quietly, you say, oh, this, this guy's a, your best defenseman. And you find out, you look at the shots, 14-11, pretty even. But they said Kuzma just uh, all of a sudden you look and see the guy that he had uh, didn't get many goals. So they're not going to get one here. Oh, just good pass. Top off pass by yeah. Gagliardi. Oh, some good hitting out there. Very physical play. It's a no possession push. <laughs> that, that, that's a dandy. Is that uh, McCartan? Is 18. That's Coyone, number Coyote 16, said. right there. But that was the, the other one. Was, the one behind him was the one that I liked. That was the. All right, the Blue Jays set up shop. 13.02 to go in the second period. Orange still on top, two to one. Steve Heider and Dale Drypolter here. Today's ball game. Third ranked Orangeman hosting number two, Johns Hopkins. There's a shot and a score for Johns Hopkins. Number 26, Matt O'Kelly, his second goal of the season. They just ran a little stack out in front of the goal, and then they broke O'Kelly off. Watch him. It's Vanderpool on him, and now he's beat him right there. Now there's the slide, but not in time, and a sweet little shot by O'Kelly. That makes it two to two, and you look at 97 stats for O'Kelly. Got his second goal of the season. All right, now it's imperative that uh, Tim Burns, number 12, can control the face off for Syracuse. The Orangemen do not want to play catch up. They have uh, led throughout. Well, you can see how hard it is to play uh, at, at this pace. It just becomes, uh, you got to take all your opportunities and make the best of them. Syracuse up with that face off eventually. Tim Burns gets it down to Casey Powell. Powell gives his teammates a chance to get set. Carcaterra comes out onto the field along with number 44, Ira Vanderpool. Vanderpool flicks it out to Coyone. Coyone, shot saved by Brian Carcaterra, and he clears it to number nine, Andrew Godfrey. Fast break. Here comes Andrew Godfrey. He's already got six goals. He dumps it off and losing control, 33, Dudley Dixon. Syracuse comes up with a loose ball. Sam Ballin being battered from behind. Syracuse timeout before the before they lost the ball. So there's your 20-second timeout to save yourself. As they knew, going down the sideline, they might lose it. Watch right here, the ball, there it goes. But they had the timeout before that. You can see he's just recognizing the timeout, but they had it in on the bench side. So Syracuse got credit for having the timeout and having the ball. Sam Holland getting a little sip of something during this timeout. Boy, what an exciting season this is for Syracuse. The Orangemen, a 22 to 21 win over Virginia. They lost at Georgetown 14 to nine, and then came back to beat Yale 18 to eight. Coming up next on Super Sports, Sunday, March 30th, a seven o'clock face off against the Bears of Brown University. So that ought to be another uh, fantastic game. Coming up March 30th. One of the few teams that wears brown has their color, right? I believe the brown, you're from uh, that area. That is my neck of the woods. Yeah. And off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of another school that wears that. Yeah. Wouldn't make much sense for them to wear another color. <laughs> no, right. So Syracuse is going to get the ball on the far side of the field. Casey Powell's going to bring it in. Syracuse got that propitious timeout in. Are you going to send me to the dictionary? Yeah, no, that's it. That's the <laughs> I just get stuck working with these guys smarter than me. And 11.58 to go here in the second quarter. 2-2. Two -two. Jays just scored. Tied things up. The Orange been looking to get back on top. Ryan Powell with his first career goal as a Syracuse Orange man. <laughs> Couldn't have come at a better time or against a better team. How about that? 
You know, one of the great looks in this game is from the end zone because you get a real look and a feel for what's going on. And there's Paul. You can see that he got the stick side of Carcaterra. Got a good crank. First three games, Powell had five assists. That is his first career goal. That's going to feel good. From Carthage, New York. So that's Tim Burns in the uh, face-off circle yep. once again. Ball down, off in the out. air. Who's it off of? Nobody. Hopkins up with it. A.T. Bailey, number 30, gets it to the long stick. Number three, Brian Kuzma. That's Kuzma right there, center. Oh, got beat out front on top. Matt O'Kelly, number 26. He beat Vanderpool out there, and then he got a fast break. They got it off, and Vanderpool's going to pick him up now as he goes behind. Got to hand back to O'Kelly. Jays again will take their time offensively. See that stack out there on the left-hand side? You get a wider shot there. You can see them running and cutting. Look right there. That's a good look at it. And they're waiting for somebody to get open. And if, if they can do it themselves, they'll take it, like and right there. Godfrey, shot no good. Wide right. Benahan picks it back up for the Blue Jays. Benahan shot high. Stays Hopkins way. So they're not reticent to shoot. They just do it on their own schedule, on their own time. 33, Dudley Dixon, a junior out of Annapolis, Maryland. See the cutters breaking there. You can see them all breaking. And then if he can beat Vanderpool now, well, Kelly will, will beat him. But now he looks for somebody to go back out on top. Real chess game today. Dixon oh, saved save. by Gephardt. Uh, Vanderpool has some trouble tracking it down, but comes up with it. We got a flag. Greg, 30 seconds. Let's see what Syracuse can do. Ira Vanderpool being checked by O'Kelly. I think it's important to get a shot off. That was. We get. It. Yeah, you get a, you get a free one there. You might as well take it. I think they're just going to call him on a hold. No? Oh, cross check. Yeah, he gave him a he gave him a cross check. So Syracuse is going to get a minute. As uh, oh yeah, he just just up around the head area. High with that. <laughs> yeah, you could have called a, a number of uh, things there, but they, they they stuck with the cross check. It'll be a minute. So there's Dan Danahan, out of Manhattan, New York, a sophomore. So Syracuse, I, I, you know, I've got to give the man down team credit for Hopkins. They've been knocking passes down, and uh, Syracuse 0 for 2 in that department. And you got to credit those long sticks out there, the guys with the six foot poles. They have taken some of Syracuse's best shots and knocked them down before they got to the goalie. Ryan Powell loses control in front of the net. A little backhanded <laughs> shot for Syracuse by Dougie Jackson. Number 11. Senior from Janesville to Witt. Casey Powell. Syracuse being outshot at this point by three. Oh, sneak. Shot and an easy score for Rob Cavalry. He snuck around. Had 27 seconds left, and he just did a nice sneak. That crease was pretty wide open for yeah. him to make his way through. Yeah, they spread him out, and then they got a quick pass in, and somebody lost him. Now, you know you're man down, so not everybody can be covered, but you got to have a closer man closer to him to be able to slide, and they, they do try to slide, but it's too late. Number six, Aaron Van Horn beaten on defense. Number two, Brian Carcaterra, the goalie, gives up his fourth of this game. Syracuse leading 4-2. to two. And Syracuse faceoff department is, is not looking good at this point. Uh, although this is the kind of thing that yet, well, let's see what they're going to call. Yep, they're going to lose it on a push. And of course, you'll take it any way you can get it. Carcaterra giving up an average of 6.22 goals per game. He's already surrendered four. We have 9.30 to go here in the second period. Number nine, Andrew Godfrey. Godfrey working his way around, being defended by. Syracuse's Matt Alexander. Godfrey holding onto that ball, taking his time, very deliberate. Alexander on defense. Godfrey being pushed out by Alexander. Good job. This oh. is a shot and a score by Dan Denahan. And just like that, Hopkins. Climbs back to within one goal, four to three. Watch, Bowen's got a stick on him, 41. Right, right here. 
got the stick, but he can't get on his stick. See, he's doing a pretty good job, but he just give Dunahan credit. He got his stick over the top of the defender, and he put it by the goalie for goal number three for Hopkins. Dunahan with his fifth goal of the year, his first of the day, and he brings his team to within one goal of Syracuse with just a shade under nine minutes remaining in the first half. Syracuse on top, four to three. Another face-off situation for the Orangemen. And this time it is Chris Clark getting a crack at it. And another whistle. And once again, Syracuse is going to commit a non-possession penalty, which gives the ball right away to Hopkins. And you can't really afford to give a team like Hopkins this many opportunities. No. It's going to come back and hurt you. That's right. And when you get you get the opportunities, you have to take advantage of them like Hopkins has done. When they've, when they've gotten the face off, they come down and take advantage of it. Syracuse is doing a pretty good job, but they've got to be able to stop the face off and the penalty that gives up the ball on the face off. Dudley Dixon gets it down to A.T. Bailey. That's number 30. A.T. Bailey making his way behind the net. Uh oh man! Oh, shot. It was off the Wide end of the stick. Left. I think he saved it with a handle of the stick. Matt O'Kelly got a beauty off. I think that uh, they got that with the stick. Let's look and see if Gebhardt. Yeah. What a Get, stick for yeah. Gar, man. Right. I'll tell you what. He's been there. He's been uh, he's been doing a swell job today. And uh, Hopkins is really peppering him with a lot of shots. Here are the Orangemen. Number yep. 22, Casey Powell. Now, Syracuse, they don't want to take a bad shot. They, they don't like it. You see how, how tough Pat, number four, is guarding his brother. So now that's Powell to Powell. Here's Ryan Powell who scored his first career goal a couple of moments ago. Look at the switch off, see? Uh oh, ball on the ground. Syracuse. Orange and blue? No, let's see. Still up in the air. And a nice job for Syracuse. As Matt Doyle comes down with it. Casey Powell. Shot wide. Syracuse ball. Good crowd here today, by the way. Opened up the top again, which means in the Curry Dome that they expect uh, quite a few people. Matt Kataya way outside. Kataya cradling the ball. Look at him switch. They switch defenders. You know, you come down, all of a sudden, now watch, he gets beat. Now somebody's going to switch. Oh. Clark shot high. Hopkins plays good defense. You know, I, I was looking at the number of shots. I think the, the teams that play him average about 23 or 24 shots a game. That's not a lot of shots. I've seen Syracuse take 60 or 65 in a game, so. In the first three games, Hopkins holding teams to about 23 shots. Syracuse up to 18 at this point in the half. That's... Kataya. Kataya to Ryan Powell. Shot good score by Matt Doyle. Number 29, Matt Doyle. Four goals against Yale. This is his fifth of the season. He comes streaking across the crease. And a nice pass. You're going to see him right there. Takes the left-handed shot, beats him offside, beats Carcaterra, and then he does a little celebrate. He saw yes. the knee brace on his right knee. He missed the entire 1995 season with a knee injury. So that's a great story. He is able to come back and uh, be such a valuable player. Check the face off again. Syracuse five to three. I'm just going to say seven two face offs, and they're going to lose this one. I can't nope. believe it. Syracuse got it. A penalty. Okay. Yep. So it's now seven to four. So now this is one of those things, Steve, you mentioned. Now they want to take advantage of this. You, you've got to, you know, if you're not getting the face-offs, when you do get them, let's get some good shots off anyway. Casey Powell to Matt Doyle. Doyle flips it up top to Carcaterra. Let's go, Coyone. Back down to Casey. Plays catch with Doyle. 6.20 to go in the second. Syracuse up 5-3. Big crowd on hand here at the Carrier Dome to watch the Orangemen take on Johns Hopkins. Casey Powell. The Kavavit. Kavavit out to Coyone. 
Carcaterra down low to Doyle. Doyle behind the crease to Powell. Powell loses control of the ball. And Doyle was able to get to it. Oh, nice. It back out to Casey. Nice move. Behind the crease to Vanderpool, and Ira can't hang on to the pass. Goes out of bounds. No time to hang your head. You got to turn around and go back up and play. Clearing attempt now for Hopkins. Long pass. You want to force it. They got the goalie covered. They're really putting some. Syracuse putting pressure on. Puts the ball in the carpet. Oh, good job here by Syracuse. A good ride. Very good ride. They went three on three. They covered the goalie. They covered all the defensemen. They forced a real long pass. And of course, then that takes the time. And then Hopkins got a little bit desperate there and made a poor pass. Kuzma couldn't hold on to it. Syracuse will go to work offensively. Ira Vanderpool way outside. Down in the corner now, number 22, Casey Powell. Spreading them out a little bit now. Syracuse oh. playing a little bit of Johns Hopkins game. Yeah, opening up the shooting lanes. They spread them out, go way out up on top. And that makes the crease a little less crowded. Paul Carcaterra looking to score on his brother, Brian. Brian comes up with the save. But not a very Syracuse. good outlet pass. No. Oh, and Hopkins up with it. Jays catch a break. Here they come. Here comes Andrew Godfrey. Stays Hopkins. But neither team able to capitalize on mistakes here in the last couple of minutes. Our score stands at 5-3, to three, the orange on top. Goldie Carcaterra, has, uh, he's, he's made some good saves. He's made a couple of poor passes. But again, they did not hurt him with that. Syracuse not able to get that ball off the carpet. And it's a little bit of a stack. Up on the inside, a little one-on-one -on -one over here in isolation. Matt O'Kelly. On Vanderpool, that's the matchup they wanted. Oh, boy, good job by O'Kelly to get that pass out. To number 33, Dudley Dixon. He comes up with a goal that makes it 5-4. to four. Vanderpool, a little trouble with O'Kelly, although he doesn't score. Watch what he does. He gets off a nice pass. And then there's the slide, but he rips the nets. That was a great pass Absolutely. by O'Kelly as he was ready to hit the deck. Dixon picks up his second goal of the day, his 14th of the season. It is 5-4 Syracuse, 4-10 remaining in the second period. Syracuse trailing in face-off 7-3, and we can now make that 8-3. This, this has been a big concern for Coach Simmons all season long. It has been, and uh, they're still working on it. Costly against Georgetown, otherwise they've managed to survive. Yeah, they really lost him against uh, Virginia, therefore. Lost six or seven in a row and still beat Virginia. So it's not the end all, but it makes your, makes your coaches breathe a lot easier when you get your share. Dan Denahan. Checked by Sam Vollen. 3.33 to go in the quarter. Five to four orange. Jay's working it around the perimeter again. 23. A.J. Hogan. Hogan makes a move. He's got a lane. Got a stick on him. Oh, rebound off the Hogan. Missed score by Dave Marks. We're tied at five. That's the uh, that's the thing that uh, if you're the goalie, you get a rebound. That's tough. And here's 23. That's Hogan. Now watch. Ball is down. It was off somebody, but then scoop up that little garbage man. Dave Marks with his first goal of the season as easy a score as that young man. That's right. Get. He was there in the right place doing the right thing and uh, he's tied it up. So Hopkins, things going their way. Let's see Burns again out in the faceoff. Ira Vanderpool here on the wing for Syracuse. Let's see they come up with it. And he gets it over to his wing man. Well, Burns got the faceoff but had trouble controlling it. Here's Ira Vanderpool. Takes a shot, loses the ball. Good defense by Johns Hopkins. You can Gatley tell them they Artie. want to settle it down. I just I just saw the coach settle it down. Dixon. Pass. Shots no good by Werner Kroger. Number 40. Right back in. And they're going to take their time. 245 left. Well, the Jays have battled back. They trailed 5 to 3. 24 to 20 in terms of shots. We are now tied at five apiece. 
We've been tied a couple of times here today. Chase have never led. It's a ward. Oh no, holding the ball. What held the ball? Apparently held it up to his chest. Uh, and so they are going to award the ball to Syracuse. Just like that. Gebhardt coming way out. Is he crazy? Look at this kid. All the way into the box. Gebhardt's shot saved by Carcaterra. We'll see if the Jays can clear. Timeout. Offsides. Wow. On Syracuse. How about Jason Gebhardt taking it all the way and taking a shot? He doesn't usually do that. Uh, you know, Palem used to do that for Syracuse. He maybe get off two or three a game. But uh, not usual for Gebhardt. Makes it exciting. Casey Powell. I'd like to see him put one in the net. They're going to double him. Double teamed again by Hopkins. Manages to get it off to Kavovic behind the net. Kavovic centers to Coyote. Whips it. Saved by Carcaterra. Good save. Ryan Carcaterra having as good a game as Gebhardt. Yeah, both goalies doing very well. 5-5, five to five, 134 remaining in our quarter. Second period action from the Carrier Dome. Andrew Godfrey. See that stack up again. You pan left a little bit, guys. Well, there you go. Look at that. That's one rule on TV. You're never supposed to give the camera directions, but you can see them all. Look at the wheel. They just keep cutting and recutting, and that gives you an idea of what Gephardt and the defense have to contend with. There's a good shot right there, and you can see when, when blue moves, white's got to move and stay stick on stick, and then you're going to isolate down over there when you've got Coyone playing defense, and if he says, if I can beat him, then I'll make a move. That's Godfrey. He says he beats him. Stick down. That's nice shot by Coyone. Takes Absolutely. it away from Andrew Godfrey. Here come the orange. Number 17, Josh Rule. Defenseman. Brings it up the field. 34 seconds to go. Let's see what Syracuse can do in the closing seconds of this second period. They're going to play all over everybody. We've got a timeout, I believe. Syracuse takes a time. So 28 seconds to go, tied at five in the second period. The Orangemen take a timeout, and uh, what will they try to do? Well, they've got to be, see, it, it's like in basketball. They're going to have an inbounds play. You know, they, they're going to have somebody set up because you've got 28 seconds. Now, you don't want to panic. It's actually more time than you would think, but they've got to run the right play, and that's exactly what they're doing. Now, of course, Hopkins is saying, now, what do we do? Well, what they were doing before Syracuse got the timeout is they were playing everybody hard. Everybody was man-to-man, -man, but had their stick on the guy. They were spread out all over the field, but uh, we'll see what they do. The Orange been listening to instructions from head coach Roy Simmons. Actually, that's Kevin Donahue you see right there on the left side of your screen. Let's take a look at uh, Gebhardt as he made his way across the midfield mark and then went down and took a left-handed shot. He's a left-handed goalie. Goes right, fakes. See, there's nobody blue around him, and then he took a high shot and actually put something on the ball. That was, uh, it's tough with that big bag for a stick trying to, yeah, eight saves, one shot. Good graphic, guys. Out of West Genesee High School, that lacrosse factory still cranking him out there you see Brian Carcaterra his opposite number number two little guy yeah oh. sophomore 5'8 155 pounds yeah they call him pickles <laughs> I like that nickname yeah I know you do 28 seconds left in the second quarter Syracuse and Johns Hopkins tied at five Carcaterra Spin move. Shot wide right. 16 seconds left on the clock. Syracuse good hustle by Van Horn from Hopkins, but uh, Syracuse got there just a second before. Cav of it now. Rob works it to the middle. Casey Powell. Eight seconds. Shot saved by Brian Carcaterra. Four seconds. Three, two, one. And that is going to be the end of the second period we are tied at five apiece and again a good defensive quarter we will take a timeout we'll come back with some halftime statistics for you and some observations as well syracuse and hopkins tied at five here on super sports
Welcome back to the Carrier Dome 5 5. An exciting first half. Well played. Absolutely. And yeah, we're keeping kind of an unofficial time of possession. It was even, and the game is even. So just what we expect a little bit slower than Syracuse likes, but they're still in it, and so is Hopkins. Take a look at some highlights. Absolutely. Had some good lacrosse. Uh, both goalies turning in good performances. Let's look at a little bit of offense first. This is Kavovitz going to sneak around here on a man down or man up for Syracuse, man down for Hopkins. And he put it in, snuck around from the, the back. Now you get a little put down here. Watch this put back. Marks, 42, gets the rebound, puts it in. And Syracuse, at the very end of the game, Powell takes a left-handed shot at little, little Pickles Carcaterra. Made the save, and uh, he's had a great game. Let's check the stats out. 24-24 shots, uh, saves are close, 8-7. Uh, ground balls, 23-20 in favor of Hopkins. Faceoffs, big difference, 8-4, and four, and uh, they actually had six uh, in that uh, second. Uh, Hopkins had six in the second quarter. And clears uh, Syracuse perfect. Man up goal, Syracuse one of three, none for Hopkins. So it's an even game, even statistically. And uh, as we said, both Gebhardt and Carcaterra doing a good job between the pipes. Should be a great second half. Brian Kuzma from Yorktown, of course, looks forward to this rivalry just as much as some of the other guys like Kavit and Carcaterra. He's a different player, I'm a different player. And, you know, it's possible, you know, one of us could have a good game, one could have a bad game, and, you know, See what happens. You know, it's it's hard to tell. I mean, this is his place now, and we played at my place last year. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens after the game tomorrow. And Kuzma does a good job in the first half. Holds Casey Powell to one goal and one assist, uh, much below what he has been averaging through the first <laughs> three games of this season. Well, if if he got uh, three and three, it would be much below what he's been yeah, averaging. Yeah. So that's something. Ball still down, being contested. Second half underway, Burns loses his stick, oh. but he winds up getting it back. Great heads up play by Syracuse. Yeah, that was McCartan. Casey Powell fires a wild shot high and wide. But McCartney was a great job because the ball was coming loose. Uh, one of his men had no stick, was on the ground. He just tapped it back in Syracuse. Good job, one of the things you won't see in the statistics, but it was a great play by the defenseman. So brand new second half, starting all over, tied at five apiece. This ought to be a beauty. Very entertaining thus far. Glad to have you with us. Shot and a score by number eight, Matt Kataya. Syracuse on the board at 14-25 in the second period. It is Kataya's fourth goal of the season. Kataya in the right spot at the right time. Watch him pass from Powell. That's an assist for Paul, and he just took him stick side. A little bit of a screening on the five foot eight Carcaterra, the goalie. So the guy who started it all actually was McCartan, the defenseman, and uh, people won't say anything about it. Just like a lineman in football. Kataya, the sophomore from Homer, gets his fourth goal of the year, and Burns gets uh, knocked over, but the faceoff is controlled by Matt Alexander. Number 30 for the Orange being defended by number 24, Rob Dorn. So two face-offs in a row. The first one turned into a goal. Let's see what happens with this one. Good start. That's uh, so important on the face-off as you, Coach Simmons, Coach Desco, Coach Donahue, when you get the opportunity, make something of it. Get some shots off. They'll go in, but don't take a bad shot. Ryan Powell gets way out to Kataya. Just came up with his fourth goal of the year. Here's Matt, wants to make something happen. Shot, scored, Syracuse, number 11, Doug Jackson. Great shot, great pass, an assist by Kataya. It was a, watch, watch what Kataya does. And he just pops out and takes that low shot, and Kataya just fired it over the defense, and Jackson in the right spot put the low shot past Carcaterra. So the Orangemen get their second straight face off. They scored two goals in the first minute, 15 seconds of this third period, and they lead seven to five. Which is why face-offs are always, uh, it kept us as a statistic because it, so many good things happen out of them if you are uh, if you get them. Well, let's see what happens here. The Orangemen wind up with it. Not uh, yet. Yeah. Tim Burns can't track it down. But finally, it is brought up Kavovic. Uh, you better get out of there. He's going to be. There we go. He shoots his way out of yeah. traffic. And there's Doug Jackson, guarded by number six, Aaron Van Horn. Ira Vanderpool gets it to Carcaterra. Matt Coyone checks in, number 16. Coyone, another Yorktown kid, a freshman. 
Yeah, talk about your factories. There's another place yeah. that produces a lot of lacrosse players. Casey Powell. To Carcaterra. Carcaterra watched by number 26, O'Kelly. Coyote now. Pick off. Coyote shot score. Three goals in the first two minutes and five seconds. This one off the stick of Matt Coyote. The Orangemen lead eight to five. Not a very hard shot by Coyote. He doesn't seem to take the real hard shot, but he placed it well. Left handed goes off a great pick. That was a great pick, and he just, I think, you know what? Carcaterra might have had a stick on it, and it bounced off. I couldn't see, but uh, Coyote, left-handed shot, put Syracuse up by three, and just like that, they go in spurts, this game does, and it's a well, spurt for Syracuse. After a sweet first half for Pickles, things have turned sour <laughs> in the first 2.05. Ah, there's an extended metaphor for you. The Orange would come up with a face-off again. Fourth straight here in the third period. They've scored the first three times. They've brought the ball downfield. Let's see if they do it again. AC Powell. Getting their midfield in. Vanderpool. Three goals on four shots here in the third quarter. That's pretty good shoot. I'd say about 75%. You are right. <laughs> Ira Vanderpool to Coyone. Syracuse. Three goals in the last two minutes and 30 seconds. Vanderpool will try to track it down. Kick. <laughs> Offside, Syracuse. No. Josh Rule. That great job by Rule. What he did was he legally pushed 42 marks offside. At least that's what it must be because that's what they called offsides. And uh, so if you put their foot on the line, yeah, hard to see from that angle. The referee certainly had a good angle, though. Was looking right at it. Orange up eight to five. They have three goals in the first few minutes of this third period. We're tied at five at the intermission. Well, they're getting ready to double. Powell, you can see him. They're just waiting. When he gets close to them, they must have a line drawn in their minds there. And when he crosses that line, they fire out and double team him. And we still have a lot of time to plan. I don't know that it necessarily it's a bad thing that Casey Powell isn't doing a lot of scoring because it's forcing his other teammates to get more involved in the action. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I. You know, you don't want anybody to dominate every game in terms of they, you, you want to spread it around because when somebody gets hurt or somebody's out, you need those other people. Right now, they are working the ball very well. Here comes Syracuse. Shot behind the crease. What's the one? Syracuse ball. Good hustle. Yeah, absolutely. Hopkins really hustling. It was Bailey, number 30, didn't get there in time, but he sure put a good run on it. Kyle Kataya and Timmy Glisker. Check back into the game. Uh, Glisker's a big target there, about 6'4". They put him on the crease, and uh, they'll put him moving around. That's a tough guy to see by if you're 5'8", like Carcaterra is. Syracuse out shooting Hopkins, 29-24. Oh, good move. Cab of it. Rebound by Glisker. Kataya, the Orangemen have nine shots on goal already this quarter. Hopkins yet to make an attempt at the net. Pass. Syracuse loses it. Good hustle by the defense of Hopkins. I don't think the ball has been on the other end of the field yet this period. You're first, right. First uh, four minutes and 12 seconds. It's been all Syracuse. Three goals in the first 205. Now Syracuse really contesting. They've sealed everybody off except the far defenseman Kuzma, and they're going to try to force the long pass. And Hopkins breaks it and clears it. Johns Hopkins, bounce pass. Oh, good save, save. Gebhardt. Dudley Dixon stopped by Gebhardt again. Cummings pass. Score for Syracuse. Rob tapped it off the beautiful feed from Ryan Cummings. He gets an assist against his former teammates. Cavett picks up another goal for Syracuse. Nine to five, four goals in the first four minutes and 39 seconds of this period. Well, there it is, good defense. Once again, Syracuse does a great job. That was McCartan who checked the stick. Now the outlet pass after the great save. And I was just gonna say, Somebody's open on the crease. He takes him up and down and then goes downtown. But you know, it was a great pass by Cummings. He doesn't run all that fast anymore. He got that brace on and just a pinpoint pass, however, by him. Well, Kevin faked Carcaterra out of his shorts. 
put it in the net. Nine to five Syracuse. Fast Here break. Here the Blue Jays. Shot wide to the left. Kroger gets a wild shot off. And it looks like the Jays are starting to panic a little bit. They were taking their time with each possession. Now they're just firing as soon as they get downfield. Well, they tried to get a break coming out of the substitution area. Syracuse stayed with them. And uh, they're not going to change their game plan. Down four, how long can you afford to hold on with them? Well, for a while, un until you you know you don't score uh, for a couple of times. Then maybe you. But I don't. I don't think that that's going to. I don't think that's going to happen. Billy Evans to Dudley Dixon. Dixon gets it to Denahan. Denahan around the crease. Checked by Sam Ballin. Denahan trying to shake free. Shot wide by Kroger. The Jays get it back. That's Dudley Dixon, number 33. This is a cat and mouse game, isn't it? There's McCartan playing some good Double defense team. for the Orange. Someone from Syracuse gets a stick on it. Gebhardt. Oh, great job of getting it in the crease. And then getting it out. What a pass. Here comes Syracuse. Matt Alexander loses control. Ryan Carcaterra comes up with it. Smashed from behind. <laughs> there was a lot of intensity out there. It was Alexander brought him down. It's going to be a whole 30-second penalty. 3-0 in the white. 3-0 in the white. So, <laughs> Alexander, watch what Alexander does when he comes out. Where are you going? Nowhere. <laughs> hey, I was just going after the ball. That's right. Tried to get the stick if he just did the stick, but obviously he... Got him on the body. So Alexander will serve 30 seconds for holding. 8.52 to go in the third. Orange been up 9 to 5. They've scored four goals already here in the third. Jays 0 for 1 in man up situations here today. Now, this is one of these things where you want to, this will get you back in the game. Give you a little momentum shift. You've been getting the face offs except the last three or four. So, oh, there it is. Boy, trying to score. Billy Evans beats Jason Gambart. And Gebhardt wasn't screened. He uh, just mis misjudged where the ball was going. Well, you know what happens? You know, you would say that because that's you're absolutely right, too. But when you're one-on-one -on -one with a goalie, believe me, you got the advantage. And uh, that's exactly what happened. Your reaction time, it's, it's like, uh, do you ever have somebody hold a dollar bill out and try to trap it before it uh, goes between your fingers? Same thing. You're reading it, and when he gets the shot off, by the time you react, it was over his head. So you're absolutely right. It looks like you should stop it, but it's a tough shot. Well, he's had a spectacular day. Absolutely. We won't hold it against him. No. Syracuse leading nine to six. Hopkins trying to cut the deficit, and so they got a goal. Now they get the faceoff. So it's uh, back to uh, Hopkins. Perhaps a momentum change. That's what they'd like to do if they cash in on this one. Momentum back to Hopkins. Although the score certainly is Syracuse's favor at this point by three. It's Andrew Godfrey, number nine, guarded by Devin Ackerman. Godfrey. Has a centering pass. Marks goes after, comes up with it. All right, now there's a double team. Somebody's open. Like right there. Good save. Dixon saved by Gebhardt. Marks comes up with a rebound. Shot wide left by Jays. Syracuse so got settled down a little bit. The defense there, they ran a double team, but uh, then they lost a man from, uh, from Hopkins. He was behind the cage. Uh, they couldn't get the ball to him. Johns Hopkins has the ball with 7.47 to go in the third. They trail Syracuse 9 to 6. Shot wide. Well, oh, that's Syracuse ball. Good hustle. That cabinet. Oh, no, that's Casey Paul. Wow. Those numbers are hard to read, aren't they? Yeah, they're very small. Yep. And we don't want to make excuses, but the, the, the game before this one, we had Hobart out here. They were the white jerseys with the blue numerals. Huge numbers, very yeah. easy to see. Uh, but uh, this is what Syracuse is wearing this year. Oh! Hardman score. Let's see. Casey Powell. Casey gets his second goal of the game. Took it the whole way. Coast to coast. SU with its fifth goal of the period. Kuzma's with him. He makes a move on Kuzma. He gets the stick down, but the left-handed shot by Mr. Powell puts him up by four once again. You're going to see it from ground level. Kuzma had the stick, but Powell held off until... He had a better shot and put Syracuse up by four. Casey Powell having a good day. 
And now Chris Clark will try to secure the face off. He'll be opposed by Werner Kroger. Ball on the ground. Kroger is low to the ground, but he makes a bad pass. Clark loses control. Who'll come up with it? No one yet. Finally brought in by number six, Aaron Van Horn. Syracuse player down. Yeah, he's down. It's Howell again. Howell again. And he seems to be limping. No, no backup. Uh, goes Syracuse. Powell, yeah, he came up a little bit uh, gingerly on that uh, leg. Casey already came out of the game once earlier today. Yeah, look, just a, it was a collision. That's a that's a concussion type thing where you bang your knee with the other guy's knee. There's a shot by Good save. Little brother gets the better of it that time. Nice save. Gagliardi, number 43. There's Great Brian pass. Big stick. Here come the Blue Jays, number 10, Kevin Kaiser. And they lose it. And they have had some unforced turnovers. Hopkins has. Syracuse going to get a chance to clear it, but they're going to put a lot of pressure on them. Let's see, they got a horn while they change, so Syracuse have a chance to get a little bit set up here. And so will Hopkins as they cover everybody, but the goalie and the far defenseman trying to force the long pass. That's Powell. Well, just a bit under his average. Uh, as you said before, if he had three goals and three assists, he'd still be below. He's averaging almost nine points a game. He's got three. Well, we still got a lot of time to go. 6.23 in the third. Syracuse up top. Offsides, yeah, and they were also offsides. Lose possession and right back in. John Desco. Looking on as his club leads 10 to 6. Next weekend, the Orange will be at Towson State. Kuzma brought the ball over. He goes back now. And That's a nice effort by Willie Evans. Jays get it back with six minutes to go in the third. They're down 10 to 6. Kelly being watched by Vanderpool. Oh, Kelly. A double team. Oh, now penalty. And an attempt at the net. Dan Collins. Probably going to be 30 seconds. Hey, well, oh, slash. That's going to be a minute. We're right around St. Patrick's Day. You got to figure a guy like O'Kelly's going to do, <laughs> going to do some damage. Should have some today. luck, huh? Uh, there's the shot. They stopped the shot. Got a stick on it. The penalty happened before that, and that's going to be a minute. So the Syracuse man down team has their work cut out for them. I believe it was the other Carcaterra, the Syracuse Carcaterra, not Pickles, that got the, the penalty. Now my question is, if he is Pickles, what this, what's Paul's name? I, I don't know. What other condiment? <laughs> there in the Carcaterra family. Trying to jam the lanes with those sticks so you can't get a good pass off. Hopkins being patient out on top. See a lot of sliding. You got to slide, cover, skip a pass. There he Oh, pass. beautiful yeah. shot and score by number 23, A.J. Hogan. House. Great pass, Jason Gampard. You can see the beauty of the man up as they just try to pass and pass. They'll go all the way and then they'll skip a man. Like I did there, and as you're anticipating where it's going to go next, they give it to an open man, and he just takes a beautiful shot. You hit the nail right on the head when I asked you how long you could afford to be deliberate or as deliberate, and they are sticking to their game plan. They trail by only three with 5-12 to go here in the third. Yeah, it's a, you know, they got a whole quarter to go, and it's a game of spurts, and uh, if you get a face-off, uh, you know, th good things can happen. And Hogan. Uh, they got the last one, and they're going to get this one. Well, that was Hogan's second goal of the season. The face-off's controlled by Kroger. Here comes Kroger. Oh, now, see, that's a couple times they have done that. A good thing happens, they get the face-off, but they do not take advantage of that opportunity. But the last two face-offs in a row have gone to that guy. He's a little 5'8 guy, I think. Good technique. Not even 5'7 out of Columbia, Maryland. Yep. Josh Rule. Back to Gebhardt. We've seen him take one shot already today. To Ryan Powell. Powell with his socks pulled high. A la Lawrence Moten. 
Well, differentiated from his brother. He's well, got the low socks. The, the contrast, Kataya with no socks. Right. Matt Kataya. Casey Powell behind the crease now, Syracuse. Kavovic gets it back to Casey Powell. Back to Rob. Outside to Ryan Powell. Kataya again. Syracuse being very deliberate. Good defense by the Jays. 4.06 to go in the third. This is the type of thing that eventually, you know, the, the defense gets tired. Next time down, maybe they lose a step because you make them work so hard on these and they got to keep moving and shifting. And Syracuse just working the ball deliberately. And then now they've got the goalie really kind of screened there. Kataya back across the field to Ryan Powell. Casey. Looks it down to Kavanaugh. Well, that's Matt Doyle now Kavanaugh has. Back to Matt Doyle. Matt. Bang! Nice move. Matt Doyle comes up with his second goal of the game. And Syracuse, 11, Johns Hopkins, 7. He just lulled him to sleep. He got him, watch the move. He just says, look, you didn't pick me up. I made one step. It's a great, if we replay that again, you watch. He takes one step, and when the man doesn't react, he just does it again, and he makes it, watch. Now he didn't, now there's the slide. They slide over, number six, Van Horn tries to come over, but it's too late, and that's all that passing around, kind of lulls him to sleep, and then he made the quick move, and number 29, great job by Doyle. Senior out of Elmont, New York. Six goals on the season now. Kroger comes up with a face Number off. three in a row. That's Andrew Godfrey. Oh, good strip. Orangeman, great defense, but Danahan there to pick up the loose ball. You know what I would say right now, if I had to say a big difference, I think the Syracuse defense, the people kind of aligned in the win in Virginia, or, you know, when they beat Virginia, but giving up so many goals. Uh, I think they're playing good defense. And you know what? They are putting the ball on the carpet. Because they're taking them away, and, and they're really getting sticks on people. I think they're playing exceptionally well today as a unit. Under three minutes here in the third, 2.56 to go. And Orange up by four, 11 to seven. They have six goals here in the third period. They've outscored Hopkins six to two. We were tied at five at halftime. Hogan stumbles, re recollects himself, gathers his composure, gets a shot off wide. You can tell in this sport that a, a good defense is a good offense. In other words, if you can keep that ball down there and uh, you can keep, take the pressure off your defense, that uh, it's going to help you in the end. And Syracuse has played well both offensively and defensively, especially when they started getting those face-offs to start the second half. And got some good goaltending right there to get another piece. Another save by Gebhardt. Ira Vanderpool. Talking to Coach Simmons yesterday, and uh, he said that the Orange have lost seven times at the carrier dome. Two of those losses are to Johns Hopkins. Yeah. So they'd like to uh, do something about that here today. So Vanderpool throws it away. He's not had his best game so far today, I don't think. There's Godfrey. Gets it upfield to Matt O'Kelly. O'Kelly watched by Ryan Cummings. O'Kelly behind the net now. Gets it Dan Collins. The fans are applauding the defense. Good job by Josh Rule. Manipool checking Bailey. Bailey gets a shot off, no good. Oh, that's Syracuse ball. Good hustle. And Ryan Cummings, Ryan Cummings. Would have been pumped up. Just like that, it starts. And Syracuse gets the ball up to Vanderpool at the midfield. Orangeman don't waste any time. Here comes Ira. Well, they got a minute 15. Casey Powell. Powell bangs into Matt Doyle. Powell spinning. Behind the back. And let's see if Syracuse can track it down. They do. Carcaterra comes up with it. And he flicks it back down to Doyle. See how quickly they get rid of the ball? That's a real important 
concept to remember because you can make things happen. Don't hold on to the ball. They know where it is. When you pass it, it makes it much harder to follow. Jackson outside to Carcaterra. Centers to Coyone. Down to Casey Powell. Back behind the crease to Jackson. Jackson flips it back out to Ryan Powell. Playing some catch, waiting for something to happen. Looking to create with 30 seconds left in this period. No, they're certainly going to play for the last shot in this quarter. Wait for Ryan the double Powell team. To Coyone, 17 seconds left now. Matt Doyle, centering pass, score by Doug Jackson. How about that? The Ironman score their 12th goal of the game with 11 seconds to go in the quarter. They're seventh of the period, and they're starting to pull away from Hopkins, 12 to seven. Doyle read the double team perfectly. Watch it. They slid over to double team. See the other blue jersey? And he got rid of it, made that pass, as I said before. When you read the double team, somebody's got to be open. You got the vision, you pop it out. And, you know, he moves pretty well for having that bad knee. That uh, he, He's done some real aggressive moves with that and uh, just did a great job. Two goals and two assists in this ball game for Doyle. For Jackson, rather. Oh. Get kind of hard. A... Four seconds. Three, two. And that is the end of the third period. And what a third period it was for Syracuse. They outscore Johns Hopkins 7-2. to two, And uh, they lead 12-7 to seven with 15 minutes left in this game. Great job defensively, and there's, uh, there's love, a good one right there. Yeah, we love Jason Gebhardt, too. We'll be right back for the fourth quarter. Syracuse leads 12-7. I think this game today is as important as May is for us. I think that's a great lesson that I've learned from Roy Simmons and, and from working at Hopkins uh, over the past seven years is that March and uh, April don't matter very much. It's uh, how, you got you, how you're peaking and how you're playing in early May and then going into those championships and into the Final Four. And Certainly an important game, but not do or die, according to head coach Tony Seaman. Syracuse leading 12-7 to as we go into the fourth quarter. It's not over yet, but we should point out the last time Hopkins won here at the Carrier Dome in 1995, the Orangemen went on to win the national championship. So uh, it's good, uh, good practice, if you will, getting ready for that, uh, that strenuous playoff run. Ball down. Syracuse is doing what they did against Virginia when they started losing faceoffs. They are crashing people, and they are they are in your Kroger there, but they're going to get a technical. They're going to lose it. But see, that's the thing. If you're going to lose the faceoff, then go in and knock them down and get the ball back is the philosophy. And uh, they got a penalty there, and that's what happens sometimes. But it's better than I think it's better than just you know content, uh, you know not contending the faceoff. Tim Burns, a freshman from Baldwin, New York. Thirty seconds for holding. Here come the Jays. Just underway in the fourth period. Syracuse on top, 12 to 7. Blue Jays have taken advantage of the man-up situations here today. Two out of three. Watch a sneak from behind right there. Good slide. Good save. Good job by Gebhardt. Saves it, and then the shot by Kroger's wide left. Did you hear that loom clicking down there, Steve? That ball was down there, and everybody's trying to put a stick on it. I thought that was your knees creaking. <laughs> Could be. Okay, penalties up. Danger time. All right, Ryan Cummings makes it back in there. Yep. No damage done by the Jays in that 30 seconds. 14-17 to go. Still 12-7, Orange. Hopkins still out shooting the Qs, 40-36. But Syracuse much more efficient, 12-7. The Orangemen lead. Dixon off the post. I fly. Syracuse closest. Closer, I should say. Here's the pipe. Bingo. <laughs> High fly out to the left. Stays a shot. And Syracuse is going to have to clear and a little bit more aggressive. Uh, Hopkins here on this ride as they're going to try to force Syracuse into a turnover. The last time, the goalie took it all the way up. Poor pass, and it's exactly what Hopkins wanted to do. So an unforced error. Uh, despite the best efforts of Tim Glisker, yeah. Syracuse unable to track it down. 
And look at that goals uh, last time the ball game against Yale Syracuse went nuts with 10 goals in the second period here today seven goals in the third and it's a five goal lead with 1343 to go. I believe they had, they had three goals off of three face offs too and they haven't gotten a face off in a while so things have calmed down a little bit in the scoring department but uh, they're letting the defense do a lot of work now. Kroger he's had a good game. Kroger. Out to Dudley Dixon. That's A.J. Hogan. Hogan gets it back to Billy Evans. We're waiting to get uh, the right people in. Uh, well, Kelly comes in. He's been productive today for Hopkins. So the Blue Jays not panicking. They're taking their time, being very deliberate. And there's a shot and a score for Dudley Dixon. Picks up a goal and Cuts the deficit to four for his ball club. 12 8. Syracuse still on top. Picks it about 12 yards out. Just takes a low shot. Beats Gebhardt. That's Dixon's third goal of the game, his 15th of the year. Gebhardt would like to have that one back, but he can't. Now here's where the momentum. Now it's 12 8. Can they get a face off? The Kroger's been getting them. Let's see what happens. Syracuse has got a big stick. Now look who's on the wing. Powell. Powell's here. Yeah, Casey Powell's on the wing. Tim Burns trying to get the face off for the orange against Kroger and he comes up with it. Nice job by Tim Burns. There's Burns. Now they're going to get Burns out of there. He did his job. He got the face off. Tab of it back to Doug Jackson. And they're playing a tight defense now. This is the, they'd like to get this ball back. Down by four. Still a lot of time. but. Powell way up top to Kataya. Ryan Powell back to Kataya. Tap of it. Shot and a score for Syracuse. Was that number 11? Yes, yes. it was. Doug Jackson again for the Orangemen. And he is having quite a ball game. His third goal to go along with two assists. A great pass from behind by Kavavit. He just went high. Watch Kavavit. Just a little touch pass. Back. Leads him perfectly up in the air. And uh, DJ doing a super job for Syracuse. Comes up with second assist. Now did Kavavit or Jackson get that goal? Jackson. Okay. Because they put Kavavit up on the scoreboard and that threw me off. All right. We can't pay attention to that. No. Syracuse up 13 to 8. They're going to throw you off. We're not going to pay any attention to it. Big them. goal for Syracuse. Doug Jackson. Cabot got the assist. So that was a big goal right there. And Syracuse has the ball back. Yes. Ryan Powell. His ball club leading by five, 13 to eight. We're just under 12 minutes in the fourth. See Gliskers in. You don't see too many two sport guys anymore in Division One. No. We got a couple here in Syracuse. Donovan yep. McNabb, of course. The football basketball double. Former lacrosse player Charlie Lockwood was a walk on for Jim Beheim a couple of years ago. Charlie still talks about that three pointer he hit against <laughs> Tennessee. Syracuse taking the time now. Talking about guys that do double duty. Tony Gonzalez from California, tight end in football, having a very good NCAA basketball tournament this March. Casey Powell shot no good. Ryan gets it though. See when you get a shot like that or lose the ball and get it back. This is the really kind of stretch of this defense of the, of the Blue Jays. Jackson out to Ryan Powell. Back to Tim Blisker. Casey Powell to Pataya. Pataya the one on one move. Oh, there's a big crowd in there. Oh. Thanks for feeding me the ball. Yeah, yeah right now. <laughs> not only couldn't he handle the pass, but he get smooshed. And as I say, Glesker's in there at 6'4", number 32. He's a pretty good sized target, and he does two things. One, he can screen the goalie, who's 5'8", and number two, he's a pretty good target. He gets a stick up in the air to, to feed to, and they, uh, however, there were a, a number of Blue Jays, and they just uh, crushed them. <laughs> Seeing there's some other guys who have recently done the uh, two-sport thing at Syracuse, Melvin Toot, the offensive lineman for the Cincinnati Bengals. Played basketball a couple of years back for Coach Bayhawk. A lot of guys do the football track thing, guys like uh, Jimmy Turner. Ooh. 
Steal. Good pass. That, that's just a super defensive job. That time it was rule, number 17. They have just, I think, played a, a, a very good all-round game as a unit. The close defense. Check the ground balls. 31-30, uh, pretty even. Gives a good indication of uh, the hustle that you're getting out of both these teams. We're under 10 minutes to go. The Orange on top by five. Jason Gebhardt surrendered just three goals here in the second half. Jason Powell banged up a little bit today. But looks no worse for the wear. Ira Vanderpool. Carcateri now for Ryan Powell. Here's Casey Powell. See, he got a jump on Kuzma, and Kuzma, nice recovery. Right back playing the body position and poke checking. Oh, looked at the open crease. Kuzma does a good job again defensively. Yeah. Kroger, number 40. Kroger takes it all the way and scores on Jason Gebhardt. He's had a super game. 9.15 to go, and Kroger gets the ninth goal of the day for Johns Hopkins. The lead is cut to four. He's 5'7", right? Watch this guy. He just took it the whole way. Gets that, slides that hand down, takes a nice one-bounce shot. And then he comes back and, uh, well, he's not doing it now, but he's been doing the face-off thing. Look at that. That's his season, but he has been super today and getting face-offs. Four goals, two assists on the year. One goal thus far today, but as you said, Dale, has done a lot of the intangibles, done a lot of the other things yep. very, very well, and has kept helped keep Johns Hopkins in this game. They trail by four. 9.13 to go. Syracuse got the face off on a penalty. Syracuse on the move. The Orangemen miss out on an opportunity. Coyone tries to save it in bounds, but it's taken away by Brian Kuzma. Fast break, unsettled situation. Here come the Jays. Dixon, down low to Denahan. Then a hand watched by Ballin. That's number 26, Matt O'Kelly. O'Kelly, guarded by Coyone, gets the ball to Evans. Back down low to Dan Denahan, and we've got a whistle. Had a problem, uh, substitution. So the bench official made the call, and it will go Syracuse way. Orangeman on the move now. Paul Carcaterra still looking to score against Baby Brother. Great defense. Is that uh, Gagliardi? He's played a heck of a game for Hopkins. Carcaterra continues to work hard. His stick was hit as he tried to get that shot off. Good hustle by the Orange. That's a push. Yeah. Excellent hustle by yeah. Syracuse. Yep. Ryan Powell. That's the difference between winning and losing. Yeah, checking out the uh, the Rockburns Carcaterra on his knees as he uh, skidded to a halt right in front of the crease. Trying to get a pick. Jackson. Get some Jack. Oh, he's got a oh, he's wide open. Bang. Duck Jack. Wide open. He was looking for a pick, and he got a little bit of daylight there, and uh, then he just turned on the afterburners and. That's his fourth goal of the day, his 14th of the season. There he is, just had the step right there. That was the step as uh, Gagliardi. Put the stick on him. Watch, watch Gagliardi. Watch 43 put the stick on him right there. Now he loses it because Gagliardi stumbles, and now he just turns on the, the burners. And that's a great shot that Jackson's having a game. Now Jackson tied for the team lead with Casey Powell, 14 goals apiece. Going to be a play on push. Yeah, that would be a Hopkins ball. Jackson, a uh, great career at Syracuse. His father, his grandfather, I should say, boxed at Syracuse. And he was a former SU lacrosse ball boy. His mom works in a football office, so it's an SU family. Yeah. Outstanding game. Oh. oh 
Gebhardt gets beat. That that one that one he he just got beat. That's relaxed a little bit and uh, they just put that one right by him. That was uh, Evans. Every time Syracuse goes up by five, the Jays answer. Evans this time with his second goal and nice shot, very nice shot. Lower yep. left hand side of the net. I don't think they think they. I don't think that they thought he was going to shoot. Is what happened and he. Uh, he didn't have to set himself. He just took a quick shot, and uh, it's going to be, again, as you said, a four-goal lead. We saw how Syracuse scored three goals in two minutes, so certainly this game is not over by any stretch of the imagination. 7.28 to go. Orange on top, 14-10. to 10. Oh, they had a, they, it, Now they got a problem because they had a wing in too fast. Wait a minute. Can well, we face this? Hopkins Let's see. coaching staff going nuts on the sidelines. Procedure against Hopkins. To wipe out, they're going to do it all over again, I bet. Yep. Penalty on both teams. Two technical the Hopkins fouls assistant coaches were going wild. Here you see head coach off. Tony Seaman pretty calm, but his assistants were going berserk there just a moment ago. Hey, what's up? That's their job, though, to go berserk. You get to be cool, and the assistants have to lose it on occasion. Oh, nice little draw there by Syracuse. Still nobody has it. Whistle. Push. Burns uh, did a nice job. Oh, no. See, look, right back at it. Syracuse caught a little bit napping. Dixon shot fires off wide. 7.15 to go. 14-10 Orange. Billy Evans. Guarded by Ryan Cummings. Cummings checks him. Uh-oh. Open. Oh, saved by Gebhardt on the shot by Marks. Jays get it back. Another save by Jason Gebhardt. Here comes Casey Powell. Syracuse on top, 14 to 10. Casey Powell behind oh, the back, oh. saved by Brian Carcantera. Fantastic. That's why it's the fastest game on foot. How about that? What a great sequence right there. Matt O'Kelly to Denahan. Danahan guarded by Volin. Back to Dudley Dixon. Open Dixon, the, crease. the mark, score. Somebody got a big problem there because he is, they have not guarded him and uh, they're up to three. Well, it's getting a little tighter, 14 to 11. Syracuse was in control. The Jays have scored two in a row. Watch, see, there's the pass and he is wide open on the crease. There is nobody there. And somebody said, who's got this guy? Marks with a second goal of the ball game. And it is 14 to 11. Wow. Still a lot of time, 6-13. Syracuse could use the faceoff, but Kroger comes up with it. Oh, they're going to get a slash. They better got to play good defense now because they're going to be down for a minute anyway. They could give up two goals. Is that a hand? You want to yeah. get, get that ball on the carpet. Centering like pass, Mark smash. <laughs> wow, took a shot there. Nice little smack. Paid for that last goal. But they're going to be up for a minute now. 5.52 to go, 14 to 11. Orangemen on top, they have controlled from the outset of the second half. We were tied at five at intermission, but the Jays are battling back. They've cut the lead to three. Sakran gets a minute. That's tough. Well, let's see what the Blue Jays do in the man up situation. They're half, half and half here on the man up. Good percentage. Dixon. The last time they got a sneak from uh, 42 marks. Gebhardt being tested here in the fourth period with his ball club leading by three. He's got his work cut out for him. Johns Hopkins, the number two team in the country. The Orangemen with a win would certainly move up in the USILA polls. They are ranked third this week. Out on top. Oh, ball on the ground. That's tough because now you got to get back. Yep, Evans managed to come up with it. Shot by Dixon. Save again by Jason Gebhardt. Dixon. Ball's loose. Ball is on the deck. Hopkins comes up with it. Shot wide again. That hit the Yep. 
11 seconds left in the penalty. Great job by Syracuse in killing this penalty because all the action has been down toward Jason Gebhardt. 17 saves. He had 19 against Virginia, 16 against Georgetown, 11 against Yale, 265 saves last year. Hey, it's your pass. Does it. That's your pass. Still the penalty successfully. We'll take a look at the USILA poll. We mentioned Syracuse and Johns Hopkins. Hopkins 2, Syracuse 3. Princeton, of course, the top dog at number one. Uh, this Hopkins team lost to the Princeton Tigers in overtime, 7-6. to six. Army lost today to Hobart. A uh, lot of great lacrosse teams in the country, Syracuse and Hopkins, certainly the very best. North Syracuse Carolina. got a timeout, by the way. They, they, they look a little ragged there. They, uh, they had put the ball on the carpet. Nobody seemed to know what they wanted to do for the inbounds type play, so they called a timeout wisely, I think, to get things settled down. 14 to 11, the score, four, 36 remaining. Head coach Roy Simmons Jr. gunning for career victory number 272 against just 91 defeats, the winningest coach in SU history. 75% of his games he has won. Six NCAA titles, only five men have won as many as three. Among the active coaches, Richie Moran from Cornell and Princeton's Bill Tierney. Casey Powell banged up a little bit today, but nonetheless having a good game and uh, talked about how he developed his great skills. I think it uh, develops in high school, playing in the backyard, uh, playing with your friends, um, and just being around the game of lacrosse and doing as much as you can with it. And uh, if the more you play, the more fun you have with the game, and uh, uh, that's what um, my brother and I, and that's what the Gates did. The more you play, the more experience you have, the more things you want to try, and those things just sort of happen in the course of the game. Casey Powell, everybody's All-American with the razzle-dazzle behind the back shot, but Ryan Carcaterra up to the task. Great job. And then he started the other way. You know how tough it is to be a cameraman in this sport? I mean, this, uh, this thing moves. These so, guys are the best. We're lucky to be working with them. Casey Powell, uh, a goal and an assist today. Two assists, I should say. And right now, with a three-goal lead, you can take a little time off the clock. Well, this ought to be a very interesting last four minutes and 36 seconds as the Orange try to hang on for victory number three. Hopkins certainly has its work cut out, and there's some uh, Tony Seaman going crazy on the sidelines. What's the question, Tony? They want to know where, 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 the, where they get the ball. That they called a timeout that it was back further, apparently, is the point. Casey Powell, he's being dogged by... Ryan Kuzma, as he has been all day long. Powell, 4.20 to go. Powell continues to See how, try to make something happen. How, how, how close everyone from Hopkins guards the other guys because they want to make sure that if there's a pass, they want to get that ball on the carpet and get it back. Kavavit being watched by Jay Penn. Double team. Kavavit outside. Doyle has it. Under four minutes. Matt Doyle. out to Kataya. Watch by Penn. Behind the crease is Kavavit. Van Horn defending. Now you do not want to take a bad shot. You don't want to lose the ball. You do not want to take a bad shot. The Orangemen continue to eat the clock. Three minutes and 28 seconds to go. Syracuse in no hurry to take a shot. Leading 14 to 11. Ryan Powell thinks about it. Gets it back from Doug Jackson. Powell. Watch by Penn. You see when they take a, when you come close to someone, they're going to double team. They're going to jump you. That's what they're doing now. They're rotating. They jump and they send somebody back. A big stick to a short stick. Casey Powell now. Gets it to Matt Doyle. 2.56 to go. The Orange are doing an outstanding job. Kataya, pass over the crease. To Doyle, Doyle gets it back out to Ryan Powell. Kavavit, Kataya, the Orangemen just running out the clock. The fans appreciate it. Well, it's a tough thing to do. It's, it's, a, it's a real skill when these guys, as good as Hopkins, they're all over them, putting the aluminum on them. Masterful job. Yeah, absolutely. And Matt now, Doyle. Doyle open. 
because they'll double team and the guy who's not who's left alone has to get free and help out the old days oh, and Syracuse does cough up the ball but the Orangemen managed to come up with a loose ball who else but Casey Powell Doyle fires on Carcaterra where'd the ball go I think the ball, the ball was it looked like it was stuck in uh, in uh, Carcaterra's stick or maybe in his maybe in his face mask Tony Seaman finds Ooh. no humor in the situation. Well, they got that little flap down there to protect your neck, you know, and that's a, that's a great feature on a goalie helmet. Well, Syracuse killed two and a half minutes there, and it's going to be awfully hard for Hopkins to come up with three goals in the final two minutes to at least salvage an overtime. Well, they're not going to, they're going to hurry now. Here they come. We got a whistle. They had, they had, they had a substitution that they're complaining about, I think. There's a flag. Well, Hopkins catches a break, illegal procedure against Syracuse. So that's a technical fall. 30 seconds. I don't know what the... This is a, this is going to be quite a discussion. Well, looks like that's the end of the discussion. Eh? That, that it is, as most discussions with yeah. officials are. Those men in the striped shirts always win. Yes, they do. Well, that's going to be Syracuse. Good break for the orange. About I, 47 to go. I don't think they wanted to take a shot. There was was not backed up, and that's exactly what happened. Yes, you got to take a shot quickly, but you got to make sure you had a backup. They had no backup. Gebhardt. Here come the Orange Men. 9,511 fans on hand to enjoy a great Syracuse, apparent Syracuse victory. I shouldn't get uh, too far ahead. They're up 14-11 with a minute and a half to go. How about that, Dale? 9,511 fans. What a great, uh, great showing for the Syracuse fans. Great season. They, you know, they come out and they, uh, they love the Orangemen. And I'll tell you one thing, it's uh, it's something to, you look at the other schools uh, who have great programs and uh, Syracuse people doing the best in supporting their lacrosse team. Quick figuring, about 25,000 people have attended the three home games thus far. They drew almost 11,000 against Virginia on opening night, 10,960. Had about 5,000 or so against Yale. And then 9,511 here today as uh, the Orange will lead 14-11 with a minute and 30 seconds to go. With a win, Syracuse would improve to three and one. The defeat would drop the Jays to two and two, and presumably the teams would flip flop in the USILA poll. One would presume that. Well, if you like this one, we encourage you to join us again because uh, there's not much to, uh, more exciting than NCAA lacrosse. Brown comes to town on March 30th in two weeks, 7 p.m. face-off. Syracuse will host Brown University right here on Super Sports, April 13th. Well, back to this game, you're going to get a. They're still discussing this, but it's it's a moot point because it's uh, there was a procedure call against Syracuse, and then when they got the ball, there was uh, there was some complaining about where they got the ball, and then it degenerated from there. <laughs> Casey Powell is going to have to get rid of it. Long pass on the carpet, and uh, Jackson doesn't get to it. Let's see what happens. Matt Doyle. Boy, he's been hustling. He's dogging. Oh, great job by Matt Doyle. That Syracuse ball. Good hustle. Now there's a guy, Doyle, just uh, just been hustling all day. And there's that big knee brace. I never thought that he'd be able to play as well as he has with that brace. He's well, he's All-American as a sophomore. Right. Boy, you've seen some of those knee injuries, Steve. You know, yeah. it's hard to come back from those sometimes. Well, a momentary uh, lapse there for Syracuse. Chris McCartan gives up the ball. Dixon misses the net. Hopkins going to get it. 109. 
And of course, as you know, the way they've been getting face-offs lately, uh, if they get a quick goal now and they get the face-off, uh, this could be very, very tight at the end. Alexander, Cummings, and Harvey Sackrin check in for Syracuse. Denahan being watched by Ryan Cummings. Precious seconds ticking away. And Kroger manages to pull one in the net, beats Jason Gebhardt, 14 to 12 with 55 seconds to go. I'm telling you. We're not done yet. No. Kroger, again, open there. And Gebhardt not able to track it down. So Werner Kroger gets his second goal, and he goes out to where he spent much of the day in the faceoff circle. Now we got a new faceoff man for Syracuse. Is that Alexander's out there, I think. And he loses it. 50 seconds. Kroger trying to make something happen again. Ryan Cummings checks him. There's some moving pick. Denahan. <laughs> Watched by Vollen. Loses control of the ball. Gebhardt gets out there. Vollen, dangerous play by Vollen. He threw it up toward the net. Had the Jays come away with that, it could have been lights out for Syracuse. But here comes Matt Alexander. He gets hit from behind. Toward the net. 16 seconds to go. Gagliardi centering pass. Shot and a score with six seconds to go. Andrew Godfrey brings the Jays to within one. Unbelievable. What a scenario. We have six seconds left. And Syracuse leads by one. He just almost takes left and comes back right. And Syracuse <laughs> has got six seconds to kill. And they're going to send out number 12, yeah. Burns. Let's see if Burns can just get this face off. And we can get the heck out of here with a win. Yeah, Kruger is back out there. What you got to do is just keep the ball in the face-off circle. There we go. Two. That's going to do it. The Orange Men beat number two, Johns Hopkins, 14 to 13. Jason Gebhardt and company, an outstanding victory as Syracuse improves to three and one. The Jays fall to two and two. And for the first time since 1993, Syracuse beats Johns Hopkins. And they did it just the way this game should be right down to the end. One these goal two, difference. Yeah, when these two teams get together, it's always exciting. We'll take a break and come back with some final thoughts. The final again, Syracuse 14, Johns Hopkins 13, here at the Carrier Dome. Today's game has been sponsored in part by Brian, the power behind the game. Well, I'll tell you what, very exciting game. 9,511 fans leave happy. Syracuse wins it 14 to 13. Kavavit and Jackson do a great job offensively. Gebhardt in the Nets. And you got to give credit to, to Hopkins. Kuzma did a great job on Casey Powell. It, you know, it was great offense, great defense. You know, I don't want to overuse that word, but they really, it was, it was a, a matchup of two great teams, and uh, personnel couldn't have done a better job. Very entertaining. Well, Syracuse now uh, gets ready. It goes down to Towson State, and then we'll be back here in a couple of weeks uh, as Brown University comes in. It doesn't get any easier. You play a top-20 team every time out. There are no easy games, and you can see how when Hopkins came back, you can't take anything for granted, Steve. So Syracuse wins the ball game, and uh, the Orangemen improved to 3-1. and one. The final score, Syracuse 14-13 to 13 over Johns Hopkins. Coming up next on March 30th, Brown comes to town to take on the Syracuse Orangemen. We hope you join us again for that one. It ought to be a beauty. Former broadcast partner Dale Dreipolcher, Steve Heider saying thanks for watching Syracuse Lacrosse here on Cable 13. It's been a production of Adelphia Cable Entertainment.